Operation Twin Cells has potentially been one of the best, if not the best, season of Rainbow Six Siege of all time. I'm genuinely excited for the new season of Rainbow Six Siege, and no, it's not a paid ad. Rainbow Six Siege does not pay me. I'm just that enthusiastic about the possibilities of what's to come in the new season of Rainbow Six Siege. One of the standout features of this season is the introduction of Scopos, the new defender. Scopos, who is in a wheelchair, Yes, we all know she is in a wheelchair. In online, we know there's gotten a lot of buzz. People are saying Stephen Hawking, Jimmy, making all types of memes, but she is not going to be rolling around the map in Rainbow Six Siege. But despite the initial surprise, it has been confirmed that she operates through two robots named Colossus and Talos. These robots can be swapped between based on situation, offering a range of strategic possibilities. Whether using them for intel, setting up flanking plays, or anchoring the site, Scopos' ability has immense potential to impact gameplay. Additionally, Scopos introduces a new weapon to Rainbow Six Siege. While I'm not particularly focused on the new guns, it's always exciting to see fresh content and new things added in Rainbow Six Siege. Now rest assured, Scopos won't be overpowered as she has several counters. Operators that bring EMPs, or Dokubi, Brava, IQ, Flores, Ash, Grenades, and Claymores can all effectively counter her robots. Specifically, Dokubi can sever the link between Scopos and her robots, while Brava can overheat them and IQ can detect their presence. Expect to see an increase in the use of these three operators in response to the introduction of Scopo. Now, I personally thought when Scopos was first introduced that she was going to be broken and ruin Rainbow Six Siege, but that is just not the case. After carefully watching the news and all the concepts they brought and showed to us, I actually am excited to see how people are going to utilize her in the new season of Rainbow Six Siege. She has two robots, Colossus and Talos, that work together, but never at the same time. One is active and one is idle. When you are on one, then that is your robot that you are on. But the other one will be basically a bulletproof cam where they hide behind the shield and just can see everything. Yes, you can hit the shields. Yes, you can do damage to the shield where you can actually blow it up and end up destroying it. And you can destroy that robot, leaving them with only one. So it's still not the sort of case where it's just overpowered or they're both walking around at the same time. So it's actually a good way to stop that or stop the idea that she's breaking the game. Another Ben's conception is that with two robots, that means you have two lives, and that is far from the truth. You see, you definitely can switch in between the two robots, but if you are actively on that robot and get eliminated, then you are eliminated from the game. You don't get a second chance. If they destroy your other robot while you are on a different one, then you are still alive because that wasn't the one you were actively on. It was just basically a shielded bulletproof cam, if that makes sense. And just for you guys who don't fully understand or don't understand what I'm saying, I'm gonna show you a sneak peek of what the developers and designers said how Solpos is gonna be used in Rainbow Six Siege. Cutie surveyed the area from afar as a sniper. Mm -hmm. Now, she still watches from a distance, but in a different way. Thanks to her new tech, Scopos is able to maintain a wide network of control unlike any other defender. That's because what Scopos brings to the field Bro, is you not can one, teleport. but two remotely controlled You can teleport! Operators. These shells, named Talos and Colossus, make up the V10 Pantheon system. This is hard. At any given moment, this is hard. one of Scopos' shells will be in an active state, where Yo, it functions like hard. an operator, while the other remains in an idle state where okay. it functions like a powerful piece of defensive utility. Scopos' control allows her to swap the states of these shells, quickly Bro, delivering you can offensive set these up or defensive ever. power. Where it's you can set these up one to flank at all times and one, yo, this is hard. Needed most. Oh, yeah. Scopos' is active shell works much like any other I know she has a new gun can too. can move, shoot, and use gadgets. It's also Scopos' primary lifeline. If a shell is destroyed while it's active, Curie's link is severed and she's functionally dead. Okay, that's good. That's good. I was wondering that because I've been hearing rumors as people say you get two lives, basically. So if they destroy the one you're on, you're dead. So it has to be the one you're on. So if they kill the other one that you're not on, you still have it, but you can't transfer. That's good. Dead okay. For the rest I'm of happy with that. Two bodies does not mean two lives. Yeah, that's good. Meanwhile, Scopos' idle shell will take on a defensive posture, deploying an integrated shield that functions much like a deployable shield secondary gadget. While in this state, the idle shell can be used as an observation tool by Cure and her allies. Additionally, Scopos can access her idle shell's camera directly at any time with the gadget button. That's hard. While Scopos is looking through her idle shell's camera, she'll have the option to swap shells. Okay. Activating the swap sequence will put her active shell into idle mode 
and put her idle shell into active mode. Okay, I, the only I, catch no is shit. that the active shell needs to be in a position where it can deploy its shield to perform the swap. Scopos's HUD has an indicator that'll make this easier. In ah, fact, okay, Scopos's I get what they're HUD saying. Will display plenty of useful information about both shells, including whether the idle shell is under attack or being affected by an EMP. That's good. That's good. I was wondering, how do you know if you're getting shot at or something like that? You can see it right there. That let me use my cursor right there. That's hard. Okay, smart, smart. I'm liking this operator. Scopos is a very. My only thing is, obviously, this sounds like it's going to be kind of overpowered. It might not be, but if it is, how can they nerf this? Like, what could they do? Maybe that's a video I should do. But what could they do? Oriented operator that requires players to collect data and quickly act on it to maximize her potential. Okay, I need to know her weaknesses. What's the weakness? A strong Scopos player is one that makes frequent use of her idle shell to guide the actions of her active shell. For most players, Scopos will likely be a shallow roamer, operating near the bomb site while okay. having the means to extend so it. It looks like Ash's charges do damage to, a to it. Roam or fall back an anchor as needed. If used strategically, she has the power to be one of the most mobile operators in the game. I definitely agree. Scopos's What's... idle shell can be a very strong piece of utility. Having the combined properties of a deployable shield and a bulletproof camera, this shield can offer a large amount of intel from relative safety. Sco Yo, that's hard. You guys see that? You can use one as a shield and attack above it like it's Tulsa. Like it's Tulsa. Scopos' idle shell can be a Yo. very strong piece of utility. Having the combined properties of a deployable shield you can basically and a bulletproof be Osa. camera, Look at this. this shield can offer a lar large amount of intel from relative safety that scopus idle shell is most effective when placed in key areas for the defenders to hold that's hard so it can provide information and serve as a launching point for when the enemy and least you have expects. impact so you can play from below coming out. and you can switch whenever you want okay my only question now is how loud would that be because if i see that shit right there and i'm fighting other people and then that shit just transforms is it like, is it silent? Is it quick? Because that's going to that's gonna piss me off, not being alerted. Scopos is bringing a brand new gun to Siege. Oh, and a PCX new gun. The 33 assault rifle. Kyure may not be bringing a sniper rifle into battle, but make no mistake. Her shells are still packing some serious firepower. Okay. This weapon is precise, deadly, and heavily customizable. Moving on, the new season of Rainbow Six Siege brings all types of nerfs and buffs coming to the new season, but let's start with Solus. First off, I want to say, if you run Solus, you deserve to go to hell. But, I'm not gonna lie, I was up for her getting a little bit of buff, because I thought that she needed her impacts back. But, not only is her ability to detect gadgets being reduced to requiring her real ability, but attackers will now be alerted when she is scanning their gadget. But she's not getting her impacts at all. She has been truly nerfed to the fucking dirt. Now next up is Dokubi. She is receiving a minor nerf, but I don't think it's going to be enough. She is still one of the most annoying operators in Rainbow Six Siege, even after this nerf, in my opinion. Her calls will now take 45 seconds to charge, which means she can't spam them early in the round, and she won't have access to both calls until a minute and 30 seconds into the round. While this change is a step in the right direction, it might not fully address the issues with her ability. Again, I definitely don't think it truly has. I think she should, her access to be able to gain all cams should be removed. I just don't think she needs to have that just as well. I mean, she already has two calls, flashbangs or EMPs, a great loadout. I mean, literally, what else do you need? Why do we need to add the extra measure of taking all cams away? I just don't agree with that part. On a more positive note, though, Nock is getting a substantial buff. Her ability is shifting from being a time-based to activity-based. This means that moving, shooting, or using grenades will deplete her stealth bar more quickly. This is a great change in my opinion and will make Nock more effective. While additionally, her gun's recoil pattern has been reduced, making her an even more formidable opponent. While this will likely increase her usage, I still want to put her in that S tier operator just because she's really not needed in any round. Like, there's nothing that makes me need a Nock for this round in my opinion. While stuff is cool and it does help and she has nades and a good gun, it's just a selfish op. So it can never be an S tier operator for me. It's just not good for a team based game, but it does not mean that she should not be used because she definitely has good characteristics and qualities, especially if you're just gonna go do your own thing. Now, other changes include drone boost feature, which allows drones to reach or escape areas faster, a reduction in the R4C magazine size from going to 30 bullets to 25, and Claymore is now detonating on impact. 
With these updates, the season continues to look increasingly promising. One of my favorite new features coming to Rainbow Six Siege is the Siege Cup. Currently in its beta phase, the Siege Cup will initially be available on only PC. Although it's not yet coming to console, I believe it has the potential to reignite the competitive spirit in Rainbow Six Siege. Many players have criticized the new Rank 2.0 system, claiming it has diminished the quality of rank play and the challenge of reaching champion rank. However, the introductions of the Siege Cup could bring the best players to compete for the most prestigious tournament trophies, adding a fresh competitive edge to the game. I'm excited to see how the games will be coordinated and how this could possibly impact Siege. By launching on PC first, developers can identify and fix any issues before a console release. Additionally, the new shoot around feature during matchmaking allows players to keep their aim sharp while waiting for a match to start one of my personal new additions for the new Rainbow Six Siege season. Now hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and enjoy the things that I thought was going to make this season really good. Now if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. We're on our way to 5k and you can help if you just hit that subscribe button. And make sure to check out my other video where I go in depth and literally go in depth of everything they're bringing to Rainbow Six Siege and react to it.